Few people would argue the value of creating a story about a life lived. In fact, it's really quite a noble idea to create a story of your life for your descendants. From it, they will likely learn something valuable and endearing from the things you experienced. During a family night with my kids and grandkids a few weeks ago, someone mentioned Mark, and one of my younger grandchildren asked, Who is Mark? What a wake-up call. I hadn't thought that any of mine didn't remember the grandfather who turned old school buses and ambulances into campers, took the grandkids fishing, patiently helping them cast and catch, taking them on trips to southern Utah, Disneyland, temple dedications, or traveling to Utah to participate in every graduation, baptism, confirmation, priesthood ordinance, mission call, wedding, eagle court of honor, dance recital, or other family event, no matter how inconvenient. Mark Tanner was just a common, everyday member. He earned no college degrees. He was not a doctor, lawyer, merchant, merchant or chief of anything. Instead he was a farmer, a grocer, a butcher, a tinkerer, a dabbler in all trades, master of none. But if there was a way to fix a car, the plumbing, a tractor, or a sick cow, he could figure it out. I wanted my father's story. I got it as the result of a lie. I told him his history was a BYU genealogy class requirement or I wouldn't get the A I needed to keep my scholarship. His history came by special post, the last day of the class, undoubtedly influenced by my mom's, um, shall we say, prodding. Here are a few highlights. At the age of five, I received a tricycle for my birthday. It was a real treasure and my pride and joy. There were no rubber wheeled tricycles at this time, only iron wheeled ones with a tremendous front iron wheel and two smaller back ones. I didn't have it for very long before I left it outside by the water tap where I had been playing in the mud. That day our old black cow got rambunctious and as my brothers were chasing her around the yard trying to get her back in, she ran past the mud where my tricycle was going about 70 at the time when she slipped on the mud and decided to ride my tricycle. She sat on the handlebar, smashing the front wheel. This almost broke my heart, but my older brother Owen came to the rescue and somewhat straightened the wheel back up. After that, I was the only kid in the neighborhood who had a tricycle that loped as you rode it. Here's another story. When I was about six years old, I decided to take up smoking as a pastime. So I swiped a package of cigarettes, Lucky Strike, I remember the label on them as though it were yesterday. For a hiding place, I thought right behind the kitchen stove would be ideal. I lit my first cigarette and was going strong when by some unusual piece of luck, my older brother found my hiding place. My brother decided that I shouldn't stop at just one and made me smoke the whole pack. I was dizzy and sick for several days and almost lost interest in taking up the tobacco habit. How did my brother know so much? Because he was a smoker who wasn't able to give up his own habit until decades later. And then there is the flipper issue. The year I was in the third grade, my, my brother made me a flipper from the crotch of a tree branch. You can see this coming, can't you? I got to be quite proficient. For practice targets, there were always dogs and cats going by, not to mention the excellent shots I made at the neighbor's chickens. One day against my mother's wishes, and of course I didn't ask her permission, I took my flipper to school. I shot rocks over the brink of the hill. Where they landed I knew not, nor did I care, until a boy appeared and accused me of hitting him with one of my shots. I apologized, but that wasn't enough. He insisted that I put up my dukes and have it out right there on the spot. The bell rang just then. So he said, I'll get you at recess. When recess came, he got me all right to his sorrow. I didn't have four older brothers for nothing, so I was pretty good at the art of self-defense. And then there's the chicory, famous in our family. We read about the Mark, who with his buddies stole a couple of chickens and decided to barbecue them on the spot. He said, 
We were just putting the finishing touches on cooking the chickens a luscious tender brown when we looked up into the face of the sheriff and a couple of deputies. Who knows how they knew where we were. They gathered up the chickens, loaded us into the sheriff's car, and took us to the courthouse where the juvenile judge passed sentence. We had to return to the courthouse for nearly six months every Saturday and write, Thou shalt not steal, a hundred times. Besides this, our fathers had to pay for the chickens, which the judge took home for evidence. Mark and his buddies were also required to join the Boy Scouts, setting off a lifetime of devotion to the scouting movement. Now how about you? Not rich and famous or famous? It simply doesn't matter. Will your grandchildren be asking, who's that, when your name is mentioned? As usual with family history work, there are resources on every hand. We're going to talk very briefly about journal, jar, journal jars, 52 stories in 52 weeks, family search booklets, story core recordings, and DUI recordings, DIY do-it-yourself recordings. Journal jars. Most Relief Society members have met journal jars. We stuff jars with questions, wrap the jars with lace and ribbon, set them on the counter. The object was to pull a question out of the jar and write about it. Here is a sampling. What spiritual experiences do you remember when you were a child? When did you first know you had a testimony? Did you serve a mission? What are some of the experiences you remember best? Looking back on your life, what are some of your proudest accomplishments? Is there something in particular that you'd still like to do or accomplish? As you look back, do you have any favorite years? What made them special? Is there a time you'd like to live over? Most of us put off writing our own histories because it seems such a time-consuming effort and we sometimes think our story isn't important. Both are excuses, plain and simple. To take away the sting, Family Search includes a, bar, a blog, The Granddaddy of Journal Jars, to help you get started. 52 stories in 52 weeks. Here's the URL that you can include to do some further research on those 52 stories. Notice that there are a different, there is a different set of questions for each year. The 2017 weekly questions are posted currently and you can accept the challenge, hopefully, and at the end of the year you'll have 52 notches in your personal history all completed. That's 52 opportunities to capture the story of your life. 52 chances to shape your family's intergenerational narrative. The idea here is to choose one question each, each week for a year. Write as much or as little as you want, but write something. Anything's better than nothing at all. Record your stories in a handwritten journal, a computer file, or a series of voice or video recordings. Those questions don't need to be answered in any special order. And at the end of the year, go to Family Search and add your story to your family tree to preserve it for future generations. This way, your grandkids won't have to ask, who's Mark? Here are a few of their sample questions. Where and where, when and where were you born? Describe your home, your neighborhood, the town you grew up in. These all influenced your life. What kind of hardships did your family experience? What family traditions do you remember? What do you see as your greatest strength? What are, the some, what are some of the challenges you've had to deal with in your life? How did you meet your spouse? Describe some of the major community, national, and world events you lived through. How did these events change your life? The 52 Stories Project isn't the only help Family Search provides. They also provide access to making a family booklet. The booklet covers everyone from yourself to your great grandparents. They draw information that's already available in Family Search and let you add to it. They claim that we discover something about ourselves. 
when we learn about our ancestors. Has that ever happened to you? To create your own booklet, go to Family Search and to My Family. You have two options. You can take advantage of the Family Search software. The software leads you through the process of generating your own electronic booklet to post and share with others. It takes advantage of the information already stored in Family Search, as we mentioned briefly, and automatically moves you from yourself to your great grandparents. You can also order a booklet. The booklet is available in many languages. To discover and to use this tool, go to your family tree and one of, pull down, and one of the last options is the Family Search booklet. Choose that, and you wind up where you need to be to begin. As we've said, the booklet pulls information from Family Search. Notice that uh, the person already exists in the tree, and you can make edits to the screen. It will produce for you everything that you already have in Family Search. You can add information, you can take it out. However, you edit, Family Search itself is not affected. You'll need to go back into Family Search and make those changes for that person uh, individually. Notice that you can add a photo. You are told whether the ordinance work has been completed. And you also have the opportunity to write a short story right here in this particular software. If the couple had, if the person had children, they are also displayed for you. You can also record your story with an app called StoryCorps. If you had 40 minutes to leave a spoken message to your posterity or to share with the world, what would you say? StoryCorps is a national nonprofit that gives people the chance to interview friends and loved ones about their lives, regardless of age, religion, class, or any other defining standard. These conversations are archived at the American Folk Life Center at the Library of Congress and allow participants to leave a legacy for future generations. You can access Steve Anderson's review of StoryCorps on the Family Search blog link. And you can also hear the Roots Tech presentation from the founder. Recording a story core interview couldn't be easier. You invite a friend or a loved one to the story core recording sites to share a 40 minute conversation. If you're not able to get to a recording site, you can download an easy to use phone app that will allow you to record a story and with the click of a button, send it to the Library of Congress will it where it will be preserved as one of the millions of the Voices of America. You can learn more about StoryCorps by, and how to interview someone if you can access this from the blog on Family Search. And you don't have to use StoryCorps. The advantage is that the StoryCorps recordings are archived at the Library of Congress. Almost all of us have the ability to record interviews with ourselves and others via smartphones and all kinds of fancy electronic gadgets. All you have to do is talk and don't forget the selfies. We encourage you too to review another of Steve Anderson's blogs where he maintains that photographs and stories are what create the bonds that tie generations together. We cannot love someone we do not know. Do give the video option on your tablet or smartphone a try, then transcribe or upload your recordings to Family Search. Just remember that if you interview your grandpa, as my granddaughter did recently, you must remember to give grandma the chance for rebuttal. How will you be remembered? Just remember that in a few short years, you will be the ancestor. However you decide to proceed, make sure your history is available for others to find. One of the best places is, of course, Family Search or one of our other partner sites. There are many resources to help you upload stories, pictures, and videos of yourself, of your ancestors, of the times and places you and they lived in. I've listed just a few of them here on the screen that are available to you via the BYU Library YouTube channel. 
Adding Audio to Family Search by Sister Rian, Rayanne Milik. And there are others here from Margaret Leckie, Heather Pack. Even though Heather is talking about writing a compelling story about your ancestor, there are some excellent hints for writing your own story as well. Brother Tanner has several, Sister Tanner, Judy Sharp, there are others. Please review some of these if you need help. We all know the slogan. Now it's time to act. I think I'll start with one of these. If you could go back in time and do things over again, what would you change? If you could make a good living doing the one thing you most loved in the world, what would it be? What will you choose? Just do it.